might want to wait till you hear what I've got to say before you do that. Um, I see my slides have got a mind of their own as usual, so I'll try and keep up with them. Um, um, there is a longer version of this presentation available uh, if you want it, so my email address is at the end, particularly mentioning some stuff for charities. I told you they've got a mind of their own, it's bored already. Um, uh, it's great to hear what some of my colleagues were saying about judgment, because actually, for me, this is about strategic opportunism. If you can't do anything, you have to pick where you go and how you work on it. And um, this is Hertfordshire. Uh, we're the big bit between Cambridge and London. Uh, so greater than, bigger than Greater London put together, 1.2 million people, 10 district councils, without whom uh, I could really do nothing particularly useful. Um, and actually some of them elected members and officers are here today. Um, the East Coast and West Coast main line goes through Hertfordshire inconsistently, um, and also the uh, M25, M1 and E1. So it's a big county. And if we go down, quite a lot of England's infrastructure goes down. Um, I find this map quite useful because actually it points you to how you can begin to break down things Health in all policies doesn't mean a lot to a lot of my officer colleagues. Elected member leadership and local leadership for improving health does. Um, and uh, those of you like me who are boring local government anoraks will remember that the Local Government Act 1999, in which we've all read, enshrined the three E's duty of economy, effectiveness and efficiency in local government. And one of our opportunities in public health is to enshrine equity. Uh, and I think that's where a kind of purposeful approach to health and all qualities comes in and using the tools that David and Anne-Marie have talked about to help us in that judgment exercise. This is the Association of Directors of Public Health, vision of what public health really should be doing. Um, you know, if, if all you... So I need to be careful of this because somebody might have open heart surgery. Um, but... Uh, if all you're doing is getting out of bed and delivering a safe bunch of public health projects, then actually the taxpayer isn't getting value for what you do for them. If you're trying to deliver a wider workforce actively contributing to a public health agenda, then, you're, then as public health you're trying to empower your system. And I think that's where we have to be. You can't do that without elected member leadership. They are the sleeping giants of public health. And you can't do that without actually getting other people to think through what it is. And that brings me to some obstacles to health and all policies. At its worst, it can feel like sheep dipping the organisation, you know, a means of uh, passing information from the files of officers to the files of members without passing through the minds of either. Um, uh, and if you've got 11 councils and 30 public sector bodies, as David says, you have to um, think about place because you can't do it as one agency. There's also, and that often makes people think, well, this is undoable. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our experience in a moment. Health supremacism is the other thing that comes up. You know, what makes you lot think you're special just because you talk health? And sometimes we turn people off with our language. We need to be honest about that. It also can be very difficult to conceptualise concretely whatever this actually means. What does health in all policies mean? Where's the outcome? It can feel like an industry. And actually, you can begin to ask, does it actually change organisational or organisation in you? That's for the Polish colleagues among us. Um, organisational culture. Um, and you need to understand about organisations if you're going to do that. And how does it add value to everybody? And I think particularly with the voluntary sector, what does it mean in a hospice? What does it mean in a refugee centre? What does it mean in a charity for carers to be doing health in all policies? Um, we need to find easier ways of giving people a way in. So we had a lovely formal approach that we started and then ditched it about six months later because it was useless. Um, we now go for mainstreaming wherever possible. And I'll talk about a bit more about that in a second. And we triage policy developments to see actually whether we need to do health impact assessments on them as a starter. Um, uh, and whether that's a light or a heavy touch and not an industry of paperwork. But most of our work is done purposely through partnerships where the judgment tells us there's an ability to do the income, the, the, to get the outcome by working together organically with people. 
Um, so we took a precedent. Section 117 of the Crime and Disorder Act 1998, which of course you've all read, um, which is known as the mainstreaming principle. And basically, it says actually every local authority will have due regard to the effect of crime and disorder on all its functions, on everything it does. Local governments used to doing that. In some places, it turned into an industry. In other places, it delivered change. But we're familiar with that. So just say you changed crime and disorder to the health of the population and you created a mindset. And just say, like me, you made sure that you got your hands on all the graduate finance and management trainees so that they all got a policy analysis session run by you that had health in it from the core. And just say that every graduate management trainee in Hertfordshire had to go through a public health placement. And just say that um, you tried to uh, continue this, this bid for world domination by making sure that they worked together closely with all the public health registrars. And just say that you tried a mainstreaming impact. What would that give you? That's where we're going now. And we already do have some early results. One of them is health and wellbeing is now written into our minerals policy consultation, um, which is out now. And we've taken a developmental approach to mainstreaming. So we don't talk about health nor policies, we talk about mainstreaming health through everything we do. We want culture change. A brilliant edition of the Harvard Business Review out now on organisational culture, by the way, that revises Shine and some other approaches. And we want to use system approaches. But our first phase is building the appetite and success and looking at doability. So you need the tools that David and Anne-Marie have talked about to build the highest impact areas first and then don't bite off more than you can chew and build more phases and build in elected member leadership. There are bits of Hertfordshire where health and equalities means I haven't eaten in a week and there are other bits where health and equalities means you have to share your sister's other pony. Um, it, one size does not fit all. And actually, if you've got 10 districts, um, you have to respect their sovereignty. And that, so Stevenage is writing its own health strategy, which is brilliant. It's great. It's fantastic leadership. And I'm not just saying that because the two of them are here um, and they've paid me. But, um, but what you will see is an emphasis on things that make sense for that area and doability without ever using the phrase health in all policies. So there are some key concepts, I think. And bear in mind that local government's been here before. Um, I'm not going to repeat the, the World Health Organization stuff, but I put it there purely to contrast. I would say spend time with each other. Start with appreciative inquiry. In public health, we're very good at a deficit approach. You know, we know this, you don't know that. Um, that just bombs. So what's good about what you do? What can be done better? Um, don't come up with a solution without engaging people. So, you know, um, STPs, not a great lesson. Um, there is no deficit side to knowledge. Don't try to performance manage others. Build on goodwill and develop shared plans. <coughs> and use elected member leadership. We have 14 elected member mental health champions, so that's one for each district um, and four in the county. We have 13 air quality champions now. Air quality in Hertfordshire was a real political issue. Two weeks ago, we got agreement between all 11 authorities that will work together on a shared plan. Um, so use them. I think there are critical success factors. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but the first is a clear shared view of the system. And if you've never done any systems thinking, then engage with some of the thinking of people like Sandro Galea on health systems and look at that. For charities, use the charity governance code, self-assessment. Don't do health inequalities twice. When you're doing a governance self-assessment, as the hospice I'm a trustee of did recently, we looked at equality and mission and mainstreaming and health in the same framework. And in fact, um, there is a, uh, a self-assessment tool which I helped develop for the Charity Governance Code, which has uh, gone around quite a lot of um, 
for charities in the sectors I'm a trustee of, and I'd happily share that with you entirely free. So it's in Joseph's Hospice, which cares for a very deprived population in East London. Why are we doing fuel poverty? Well, we're doing fuel poverty because it stops people being readmitted to our hospice and taking up our beds. It's a bit of a no-brainer, actually. And that comes from that. I would say this, wouldn't I? Get a peer challenge in. We had a peer challenge of public health. They came in for three days, interviewed 98 people and ate a lot of our sandwiches. Um, uh, you notice there's a thing, it's the Hertfordshire thing we don't overly challenge. That's a weakness as well as a strength. But actually, people said public health of the oil in the system, build prevention from the bottom up, districts are the building blocks, and that progress in mainstreaming the prevention agenda from across the council. This is all said by people outside the county council. Um, so we're now working on an action plan together of how we, as a Hertfordshire system, work together. And we, we co-lead. This is not me doing this. This is 11 uh, local authorities. Our latest approach is to try and develop a cultural shift by making prevention and health the day job in everything we do, as well as the big return programmes. So not just those, but as well as. I won't talk about that for the sake of time. But we have got some successes so far. Workplace wellbeing is actually being led by the private sector and by councils in our area. We have an 11 council approach to air quality that's just kicked off. Um, we actually have a corporate shared target for the Hertfordshire Public Sector Action Plan on reducing waste management on, and reducing waste in general as a health target. Um, we have bullying and mental health policies across all 537 state-maintained schools in Hertfordshire. We have mental health and financial inclusion programmes across all of Hertfordshire, we need more. Um, social prescribing has been rolled out largely because of what district councils and the voluntary sector did, not because of anything any of the rest of us did. And work underway is our planning guidance is slowly being worked into the various planning uh, policies from all 11 authorities. And most recently, as district councils are rewriting their alcohol licensing policies and now as they're rewriting their gambling policies this year, we have an opportunity to work with them there. And we have a drug and alcohol system board that actually has everybody from users to magistrates uh, and district councillors and housing people on it. Those are some examples of the things we're doing. I don't think we're brilliant. I think we're starting out. But that purposefulness has helped us make some achievements where I think otherwise we would be floundering. And so I leave you with four lessons. You'll be pleased to know I'm about to finish. <coughs> Firstly, pick the areas where the system is willing and every agency has potential <coughs> benefit. Secondly, the biggest lesson I ever learned about partnership working was from the private sector. Private sector partners pursue value through partnerships. Why are you all sat in a room together if there's no value to doing it, other than preventing you from being lonely or doing your emails? Um, pursue value relentlessly. The third thing is you must have system leadership. And in a, in a county, that starts with, trust, with um, elected members. I think in charities, that starts with trustees, in my experience. And fourthly, understand the legal powers and mechanisms that you have and your legal and constitutional world because there are all sorts of things in there that help you get things you want done. Um, that's my email address. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I invite you to throw things. <laughs>